some of the following audio used in this video was edited to have no lyrics for the ambience and or renamed for the construction of fan fiction. The following tunes are actually performed by Guns N' Roses, Black Sabbath, Aerosmith, Ozzy Osbourne, and Warrant. Original albums are owned under the label of Geffen, Vertigo, Epic, CBS of the US, and Columbia Records. Please support the official release. Yeah? Yeah? No, I need a boatload of mixed muffins as soon as possible. No, it's not- it's not for a party. No, I need to use them to pay my voice actress. I know it's weird, but, but... Well, technically she isn't human, she's a gray pegasus that delivers mail. She... She... What? She's no, she's a pegasus, not a dog. It's a magical flying pony that talks. She she does voices for me on this web series and demands to be paid in... Hello? Hello? <sighs> Great. Why would they question me this time? It, oh, oh wait, the, the chapter intro, right. <clears throat> chapter 7. How was your day? Now if you'll excuse me, I got muffins to bake. Thrash and Applejack browsed every section of the Ponyville Museum. Applejack couldn't remember the last time she saw fine art. Then again, she hadn't been to the Ponyville Museum in so long. Thrash could easily recognize the different types of art after learning from his travels with the band. He explained each technique to Applejack if she asked. They browsed through the section that documented the history of Ponyville. Applejack knew almost everything that was in this section from start to finish. She even told Thrash that if it wasn't for the family of her grandmother, Granny Smith, Ponyville would have never existed without the sweet apples they grew. Thrash was pretty surprised. They stood in the lobby looking at a large map that displayed the present layout of Ponyville. Applejack explained each building to Thrash, and pointed to their individual locations. She even took the liberty of telling him about where each of her friends lived and worked. They wanted to walk around some more, but an approaching security guard informed them that the museum was closing for the day, and they had to leave. Applejack looked at the large clock in the center of the lobby, and was shocked to see that it was 6.13 p.m. in the afternoon. She must have been so occupied that the time had run faster, Guess that's what you get for having fun. They both exited the building as the lights went off. Well, what did you think? Thrash asked Applejack. Well, I'll admit, I enjoyed seeing all that fancy art they had. She said with a smile on her face. I've been apple bucking for so long I never even thought about going to that museum. <laughs> I have no idea what you just said. But I wasn't expecting to have a personal tour guide to give me a history lesson of the town. Applejack blushed a little. Well, I, I hope I wasn't being uh, annoying or anything. Are you kidding? Thrash said with a smile. I never felt more honored to have the element of honesty as a guide. It's weird. I always thought all rock bands were full of mannerless ruffians that cared more for themselves to associate with other ponies, but you're different. You know that? Well, I'm not that kind of stallion, but there are some. Like, I know this one band called Spears and Roses. They have this lead vocalist that's a complete and total- It's okay, you don't need to give names. I wouldn't know any of them anyway. You don't seem to get out much, do you? Applejack stopped and faced the white colt. No, I usually work on weekdays. I work all day from dawn till dusk, and when the weekends come and I get a break, I like to spend time with my friends. Then why didn't you come to the concert? Huh? It was that night. You said you worked from dawn till dusk. Why didn't you join your friends? Is it because you don't like our music? Well, it's not that I don't like your music in particular. It's just not the kind of music that I enjoy. But the main reason I didn't go was because I needed sleep to get up early the next morning. She turned and continued walking. 
eh, it would have been nice to have you there. He shrugged as he followed from behind. Anyway, while we were looking at that map of the town, I became eager to see the real thing. Would you mind showing me around the town tomorrow? Applejack stopped and looked at Thrash. Beg pardon? Well, you seem to know this town better than any pony I know, so why not show me around? Applejack was all tied up inside. She was hoping Big Mac would have returned her alarm clock when she got home, so she could resume work tomorrow and go on with her life. But she did have fun hanging out with Thrash at the museum. She had no idea how to respond. Well, I don't know what my schedule is like tomorrow. Let's just see what happens. Thrash raised an eyebrow. Just, uh, meet me at Town Hall in the center of Ponyville. I'll see if I can get off work another day. Uh, what time is good for you? Thrash took a moment to think. I have an early rehearsal, so uh, how about noonish? Okay, then. She said, very unsure. She started her way back home as Thrash rung for a cab. Oh, uh, Applejack? Thrash shouted to her. She turned around and faced him. Please don't tell any pony I'm here. It's not every day I get to meet with a friend without having fans get in the way. Applejack felt a little sorry for him, but she was still unsure if she would be able to show up or not. Of course, Sugar Cube. Thrash arrived at the spot where the tour carriage was parked at about 7 p.m. at night. He opened the door and trotted up the stairs. Whiplash was sitting at the table, reading a book. She looked up and noticed the colt as he walked in and headed for his room. Not every day you come back this late. What happened? She asked. Nothing, really. Sorry I couldn't join you. I had to see Miss Rarity in action. But what did you end up doing? Went to a museum. Made a friend. Oh, good for you. Well, I'm hanging back- Wait, what? Yeah, we're hanging out tomorrow. Tomorrow? Wait, Thrash, hold on a second. Whiplash closed her book and quickly followed behind. Thrash turned the knob of his door and entered. Shredder was still asleep on the couch, but immediately woke up when Thrash strolled in. Hey, Shredder. Thrash said as he passed the black pegasus. Uh, did I miss dinner? How long was I out? He said lazily. Whiplash walked in the room. Does this pony know who you are? Does this pony know your name? Have they told me pony else who you are? What's going on? Yes, and I was fine. This friend of mine is keeping my identity safe. Thrash said, pulling out a bag of hot chocolate mix. Whiplash sighed with relief. You met some pony that kept your secret? There's something that happens once in a blue moon. Shredder said. But seriously, did you guys save any food? Just try and be more careful. You know that if any pony can see you through your disguise, then they'll be able to track you and the rest of the band. And we'll have to get all new disguises. Remember how hard it was to get the ones we have now? After all those fans kept following us all over the place? Relax, everything is fine. I would never let that happen. Thrash said, all cool and collected. You always worry me, Thrash. You're lucky I know how trustworthy you are. Oh, for pony's sake! I'm just gonna order Chinese! Shredder said, trotting out of the room. So, what was this pony like anyway? Whiplash asked. Was it a mare? Does it matter? It does to me! Snap shouted from his room under the floor. Well, you know, I'm just asking. No particular reason. Thrash sighed. <sighs> yeah, it was a mare. He knew what was going to be asked next. Was she a cute mare? I don't know, and uh, frankly, I don't care. He responded. They would always get on his case if it was a mayor. He presumes that it was because he was the youngest. I'm counting it as a yes! Snap muffled below. Whiplash rolled her eyes and left the room. Drama queen! She said to herself. Applejack opened the door to her bedroom. She looked to see her alarm clock return to its rightful place. She dropped her hat on her bed and undid her ponytail. She could hear Big Macintosh walking downstairs and rushed out to catch him. Uh, uh, hey, Big Mac! He turned and faced her. I had a feeling you'd be back this early. He asked. How was your day? It was fine. My friends were too busy to do anything today, but I did what you said and made the new friend, she said with a smile. Well, that wasn't too hard now, was it? Yeah, which uh, reminds me. 
Can I ask a favor? Yep. Applejack bit her lip. Look, this may sound both weird and annoying, but... What is it, AJ? Would you be willing to cover for me again tomorrow from 11.30 a.m. through, say, the rest of the day? Big Macintosh was a bit shocked. He was actually hoping she'd go back to work tomorrow. You want another day off? Not the whole day. I'd just work until the afternoon. Why so? I promised my new friend I'd meet with him tomorrow. Big Macintosh was a bit surprised. He knew that his sister had many friends, though he'd never heard of her ever spending time with a cult. He wasn't the type to get overprotective. It just fascinated him a bit. Well, it was a bit difficult to keep up with my regular workflow without you today, sis. Well, I know. But I promise you I'll make it up to you for this. Well, I don't see why not. Just don't come back too late. Oh, thank you. I, I swear, I'll make up for the work I missed. Applejack hugged her brother and ran back up to her room. Oh, for pony's sake, I'm just gonna order Chinese. Rainbow Dash can do a Sonic Rainbow, and what does Rainbow Dash do? Double Sonic Rainbow. There you go. That's right.